welcome to the program. I'm Imran Garda. Thousands of protesters have clashed with police on the streets of Athens. They're rallying against the measures being imposed to save the Greek economy. It's the second general strike in the last two weeks. Flights, buses and ferries have all been cancelled. Schools and government offices are closed and hospitals are operating with emergency staff only. Well, the Greek government's being forced to act by the European Union. Its growing public deficit is already over 12%, which is four times what the EU allows for its members. Greece's national debt also stands at almost $420 billion. Well, the Greek government stands accused of hiding its true economic situation, both borrowing and spending beyond its means. To try to rescue its economy and return to within EU rules, the government is imposing so-called austerity measures. Well, Greece wants to reduce its deficit by more than three quarters by 2012. To start, it wants to cut it by around a third this year alone. That's a tall order. To achieve it, the government plans to freeze public sector pay, increase taxes along with the price of petrol, and raise the age of retirement from 60 to 63. That's to delay paying out hundreds of thousands of euros in pensions. Well, opinions differed on the streets of Athens. Some optimistic, others not. There is good will on the part of Europe to help. We should appreciate that and see what we can do to help so we don't get lost. I have no confidence in what was decided by the Europeans or what is being planned that will have an effect on the public. The crisis will be paid for by them. Not a single euro will be paid for by workers. Greek Prime Minister George Papandreou is adamant that his country will do its utmost to cut its deficit as demanded by the EU countries. I have taken uh, extra measures, specific measures, to uh, make sure that this program is even furthermore guaranteed. And when I say guaranteed, I want to repeat what I have said, that we are ready to take any necessary measure in order to make sure that the goal of cutting our deficit by 4% in 2010 to the percentage of 8.7 of our GDP will be, uh, we are ready to take any measures in order to make this sure and guaranteed that we reach this goal. So I want to be very clear about that. Well, joining our discussion today are our guests in Athens, Kostas Ifantis, President of the Hellenic Center for European Studies. Also in Athens, John Svakianakis, Chief Economist and General Manager at Bank Saudi Francie. And in Paris, Financial Analyst Max Kaiser. Gentlemen, thank you all of you for joining us. Kostas Ifantis, it's obvious that thousands of Greeks are angry, are irritated, but can we quantify it? How big do you think the opposition is to these me measures? Well, uh, the, the, there's no, there's no. Uh, it's not easy to quantify it, but uh, based on 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 uh, observing what is going on in the Greek society over the last uh, uh, a few months, I would say that uh, uh, it's not um, uh, what happened today or what uh, might happen in in another demonstration a few weeks down the road. It's not representative of the general feeling and the general reading of the situation in Greece. Uh, I think the majority of, uh, of Greeks uh, have, uh, have come to realize that uh, the situation is dire, is grave, and that uh, all these years we've been living beyond and above our means, and now uh, it's not just the time to pay the price, but it's time to put our house in order. But you may say that this is not representative of the majority. However, there are thousands who have taken to the streets against these austerity measures. Is it fair for a lot of Greek uh, people, a lot of Greeks to be thinking, why should we suffer if we were not the cause of this crisis? Uh, we didn't create the crisis. Why are we suffering as a result? Well, this is a is a way out. I mean, is an uh, is a thinking that can rid us of all responsibility for what has been uh, uh, going on. Uh, but we should never forget that we Greeks uh, we have been failing uh, to to uh, to pay our taxes properly. We've been engaged uh, in in uh, in a championship of tax fraud and tax evasion. Uh, we have been uh, demanding more and more. 
from the states uh, we've been sort of uh, uh, engaged in an apotheosis of what the state can do for us uh, we have demonized in many respects the private sector and private initiative uh, so I, I really don't think that uh, a few thousands ever even some thousands uh, uh, getting uh, in the in the streets is representative of uh, the general reading of the uh, situation uh, in the past we've seen in the, the recent past we've seen how how easy it is for some groups political groups to mobilize a few thousand protesters uh, in the in the city center uh, in Athens right. uh, I really don't think it is uh, it is uh, representative John Sfakianakis do you think that this protest movement is representative of the anger and irritation at not only plunging into this deficit, suffering the crisis, but now having uh, to tighten, people having to tighten their belts as a result of it. Well, thank you, first of all, um, for the invitation. I would say that uh, this is not really representative. I would agree uh, with your previous guest that uh, uh, this is an uncomfortable situation for many, but uh, most of the polls, if not all of the polls conducted recently over the past two weeks in Athens and Greece in general, is quite supportive of the government. Greeks and society at large knows very well that they have no other solution but to push ahead, pay more taxes, become less corrupt, reform the system, become more structurally adjusted, and conform to the European Union standards. So I think that what you see today represents in many ways a minority, but the majority knows very well that Greece has no choice in this matter. It has to push ahead. And Greece actually has no other choice but the government that they have right now. If it falters, in general, there is a malaise, a political malaise that you feel in Greece, right. that if the government fails, there is nobody else to take over. The opposition is discredited, and all the others who are claiming to know the recipe or the right recipe cannot adjust because they have never had the experience to rule Greece. Max Kaiser, the other two gentlemen characterized this as, as being uh, Greece being in a position where it had no other alternatives. What do you make of it? Well, first of all, put down the Uzo, and let's talk about some facts here. This uh, debt-to-GDP ratio which is now crippling the country. It was the same back in the year 2000. Why was it not reported? Because Goldman Sachs, in conjunction with the Greek government, hid billions and billions of debt. Now this is the problem. The problem is that you've got bankers like Goldman Sachs and Wall Street colluding with the Greek government to falsify data. To rectify the problem, the Greek government is sent in their intelligence agency to investigate what's going on, and they've hired a former Goldman Sachs banker to head up this uh, particular investigation. So they've got Stockholm Syndrome. They're being held captive by corrupt bankers on Wall Street, and they're blaming themselves. They're beating themselves for somebody else's corruption. That's the corruption on Wall Street. Now, you have to laugh at this ridiculous situation because... Here you've got two Greek analysts saying that, well, we should pay more taxes. We need to get rid of the black market. And yet Goldman Sachs, who advised them on this corruption last year, paid less than 1% in taxes. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs doesn't pay any taxes. So to finance Goldman Sachs Christmas bonuses, you're going to ask the Greek people to pay more taxes? Do the Greek people get compensated from Goldman Sachs? Do they own stock in Goldman Sachs? This is absurd. Why yeah. are you selling your countrymen down the okay, road? Let's... And to say there's no alternative is false. There's insurrection is a possibility. Why not get rid of this government? They're totally corrupt. Okay, let's get in a, a response from Mr. Svakianakis. Uh, that's a good point from Max Kaiser. Greece masked some of its debt in a currency swap deal with the investment uh, firm, that the giant Goldman Sachs, which has been in the news a lot in recent months. The Greek people have nothing to do with Goldman Sachs. Why should they suffer? I completely agree. I mean, I don't think that... Here, one has to say that uh, Wall Street has not colluded with the Greek government at that time. No, I completely agree with this. But what I would say definitely is that, one, there has to be a resolution on this. But second of all, the Greek government and Greece has to change. It has to reform. It is too corrupt. It is not 
transparent. Uh, very few people pay taxes. These are structural adjustments that have to take place, and they have been there for the past 50 years. I'm not saying that this is wrong, but at the same time, I think that there has to be a need that the house has to be reordered. So it definitely Wall Street has a say in this, and somebody has to take this to court. But at the same time, I do not think that Greece cannot stay like this. They have to change and reform. And they do not have another chance. This is their chance.